The sixth key, <laughs> start with the managers. So uh, what I had done, which was pretty good, uh, was I clung to Scrum. And I actually took myself out of my office as a leader of the organization, and I decided to go, and it wasn't a big organization at the time, it was only, what, 200, 300 and something people. But still, I left my office and I became the Scrum Master for this small little group. Uh, what I did was I focused exclusively on the teams. I had abandoned, deliberately and, and unfortunately, I had abandoned all my leaders, absolutely. And I focused on Scrum. Uh, and one thing that's an interesting quote from Ken Schraber was that Scrum itself was invented to disrupt hierarchy. So when other organizations decide to em embrace Scrum, for example, they all send their team members and all the workers off to training. And they abandon and ignore the leaders, just as I did. And they don't really help the leaders figure out how this stuff should be done and how they actually work. This even gets bastardized even more when you work with consultants and they look at Scrum and they understand Scrum really well. And then you as a leader and you say, well, what should I do with my VPs? What should I do with my directors? And their statement is, well, fire them. You don't need them. The Scrum teams can work, right, work and operate on their own. And nothing could be farther from the truth because these are the talented, experienced individuals that you've been promoting. Like This is the essence of your success. And no doubt, none of them provide value, quite arguably. The ones that actually have their hands on the steering wheels or the ones that actually do the hands, have their hands on the keyboards who are actually delivering value. It's your skill set, it's your asset that's sitting in your leaders and your managers. So why wouldn't you bring them first instead of the teams first? Another thing that's important, as we had discovered, is that Agile really is about culture. And if Agile is really mostly about culture, it's the leaders that are the only ones who actually create the, the, the culture shift. So you really need to work with the leaders first to actually bring the kind of shift and organizational shift that you wish, and only the teams second. And if the leaders first, they are the ones that actually can cultivate the environment that you actually work and the culture that you want to work in the space that new, new ways of working actually work out for you. So start with the managers, don't start with the teams. It's one thing I wanted to mention, what did I say? Ah, right. So if you're gonna start with the leaders, then what do you do? And you as actually as, as, as a leader, what do you do? And it's quite off to the side, but we had just talked about it, so I'm not gonna pull, pull you over, all the way over there. But these are things such as working on your four A's and working on that leadership model, embracing the growth yourself with acceptance and awareness, and start to f do that kind of work on yourself to bring yourself to that level. Because you can't ask your leaders to do something that you are yourself are not demonstrating or behaving yourself. All right, that's leadership growth. Nurture versus nature.